One week after being left in purgatory, Kyle Larson wins at Sonoma. The Ross Chastain don't give an F tour continues to roll on. And Martin Truex Jr. might have the strongest starter that we've ever seen in NASCAR. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. The NASCAR Cup Series race at Sonoma was kind of unlike any other race at Sonoma that we've seen for the next-gen era. It was Rex, Rex, Rex. Somebody go get the LMFAO guys and have them remix that shot song into this because it was just constant Rex at the beginning of this race. If you looked at the little bar that Fox has at the top of the, the rundown right there, it was just this yellow bar with these little tiny pieces of green in there because these guys just could not stop running into one another. At the beginning of the race, Denny Hamlin's engine just went absolutely kablammo at the start, and he had no no choice but to just pull back in and his day was done before it really ever got started just fly out to california enjoy some wine fly back home because he wasn't very much of a race car driver this weekend you had a few other things happen early on in this race you had josh barry getting absolutely punted by eric jones going down into the hairpin and then in pure pete weber fashion that's a bowling reference for people out there that don't get it he goes in there and bowls a perfect strike as he knocked out i don't know seven eight cars i don't actually know how many bowling pins there are but i have a feeling there's more than eight to nine regardless it still works. So he causes a big accident right there. Not really his fault. And people are blaming the corner because they put that new wall in. I still think even without the wall there, he got punted to the point where he was going to slide through that corner anyways, uh, which is unfortunate. All of it kind of caused by Bubba coming back onto the track, but it wasn't Bubba's fault that Eric Jones ran into the back of Josh Berry there. It's just kind of a chain reaction. You have Ty Gibbs. He clipped the right front on that interior wall there in turn 11 and then goes down to the next corner and can't really turn it anymore. Crashes. His day is done. At least he didn't rage quit like he did in the Xfinity race where he just dumps the clutch trying to do a burnout, loops it around because he's throwing a temper tantrum and ends his teammate's day. So thankfully all of that happened. But throughout the race, we had a pretty decent strategy race going on here. And it kind of set up at the end where it's like, I don't know if the five and the nine the Kyle Larson Chase Elliott strategy was necessarily going to work. That was until Kyle Larson started to just pick guys off left and right over that final stint that he had the final 30 laps of the race, essentially. And the booth kept being like, oh, he's going to catch the leaders, Chris Buescher and Martin Trex Jr. with eight laps to go. Well, he did it with 12 laps to go. And then Martin got around the 17 and Kyle followed him through. And then he was able to set up Martin Truex Jr. headed down from the exit of turn, what, 4A into turn five there at the top of the S's and then was able to set up the pass and drive on to victory from there. So one week after being left in championship purgatory, where everyone was like, is Kyle Larson going to get a waiver? Is he not? Jeff Gluck, seemingly, has decided to censor the word waiver on his Twitter timeline, and people are like, oh, it's just a joke. I don't know, man. That guy takes everything on Twitter super serious, and he constantly is battling people on Twitter and taking into account what they had to say, which is most of the time a terrible decision to make with your life but he's doing it but censoring the word waiver is very odd to me but kyle larson did get his waiver he's now still remains championship eligible he picks up his third win of the year tying him with denny hamlin and william byron for the most wins this season and he set himself up pretty nicely for the championship battle as we head for the summer months here in a run into the championship and what just a few months time at this point but I think probably the biggest story of the day outside of Kyle Larson winning was the last race of the season on Fox. And Clint Boyer was yelling at times to be like, oh, we got to find this on racetrack. And then we just didn't do it. At the end of the race, we had Martin Truex Jr. run out of gas coming to the start finish line. He runs out of gas through turn 11, that hairpin there. And the booth is like, oh, Martin Truex Jr. is out of gas. And then the Fox broadcast zoomed in on four guys in American flag overalls, looking like Uncle Sam, shirtless, nips showing. And then we went back to look at Martin Truex Jr., who was just bumping the car off the starter to get to the finish line. And it's one of the most impressive feats I've ever seen come out of one of these NASCAR Cup Series starters. We haven't seen something like this in a while. We have seen this before, where guys bump the car off the starter to keep it rolling. But Martin bumped it for a long time. And credit to the flagman for standing there, still waving the checker flag as Martin passed underneath him at half a mile per hour and triggered the line and remained the last car on the lead lap. Devastating result for him after, you know, being en route to a P2 finish ends up coming home P27, I believe, really far down on the running order for Martin Truex Jr. And then with two laps to go up in turn five, which we saw Kyle Larson tag in qualifying, Ross Chastain just got in too hot and then wrecks the eight of Kyle Busch. The Ross Chastain don't give an F tour rolls on 
He's not going to have to go kiss the ring of Richard Childress because Richard might just have somebody hold his watch because apparently he's still willing to fight at 79 years old. I don't think Ross is too concerned about that after we saw the right hook that he delivered to Noah Gragson's face last year. But for Ross... I mean, it's almost inexcusable, right? If this was any other racing series, Ross gets hit with an avoidable contact penalty. Well, unless you're in the IndyCar race at Road America on Sunday when Joseph Newgarden just drove through Colton Herta and seemingly didn't pick up a penalty. Curious case of wonder why that didn't happen. Wink, wink. So you're left wondering, you know, what exactly is Ross thinking right here? And Kyle is, of course, mature now. The old Kyle Busch would have marched down the pit lane there and probably punched Ross in the face. Maybe he did see Ross punch Noah in the face, so he's like, ah, don't know. I've already been punched in the face once this year. I don't necessarily want to get it again from another short guy. So maybe he avoided conflict at that. And he's a father, and you don't really want to see your, your have your kids see you get punched in the face twice in one calendar year. That's a bad look. That's just bad overall. So at the end of the day, Kyle Larson picks up his third win of the season. Uh, Kyle Larson on road courses is still very good. Kyle Larson on any track, very good. It turns out he's just a good race car driver at this point. And then, of course, we had our Australian friends coming over to join the NASCAR Cup Series on the road course at Sonoma. You had Cam Waters driving the 60 car for Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing, and you had Will Brown filling in for Brody Kostecki, who was supposed to be in that 33 car, but then, of course, that whole deal fell apart in another video that I've kind of laid out everything that happened there. So Will Brown, the current Supercars points leader, was driving the 33 car for Richard Childress Racing, and both of those guys were flying at the start of this race. Will Brown ends up pulling off and having an issue before one of the restarts, or right after one of the restarts. He finishes the race three laps down and then cam waters of course got caught up in an accident uh specifically the one with josh barry and they came home 31st for will brown and 35th for cam waters not indicative of where they've been running at all day both of those guys were making their way into the top 10 early on in this race they were flying so i hope both of them get to come back i think maybe there's a chance that will brown might be back for the chicago street course i'll have to double check that but i think that there is something happening there or they're running somebody else in that 33 either way um it will be interesting to see both of them come back shout out though to zane smith he comes home p16 a guy that desperately needed a good run as his career is maybe approaching a crossroads at this point because if track house is limited to three charters like the new charter proposal says He's probably going to be the odd man out over there. It seems like Shane Van Gisbergen is going to get that ride instead of Zane. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But he needed that run. Corey LaJoy came one spot from getting his first non-drafting track top 10 in the Cup Series, but still finished 11. So he's got to wait a little bit longer for that. Kyle Busch was able to rebound for a 12th place finish after getting spun out by Ross Chastain, who came home fifth. AJ Allmendinger, the road course ace, comes home sixth in that number 16 car for Cog Racing. Everybody was wondering why Shane Van Gisbergen wasn't in that car today. He did the wheel force test for Chevrolet at Sonoma, uh, which means that he can't do the race for this as well. So AJ Allmendinger was in that car. But overall, I would probably give this race for a for a Gen 7 race on a road course, this is probably an 83, 85, somewhere in that range right there. The leader was able to pass cars, which is good. We had uh, a number of cars be able to pass each other throughout the day. Interesting strategy. You had enough cautions and wrecks to really spice things up there, maybe more than we actually needed. At the end of the day, it was a pretty complete race, at least for one of the next-gen era races. Uh, the broadcast, of course, could still use some improvement, but overall, not a bad time. So let me know in the comments what you thought about today's race, the broadcast, what you would rate it, everything that goes into that. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.